Jurgen Klinsmann, he has been pointed about fitness issues for the U.S. national team. Today against Panama, another test. And teamed up front in the attack, Josie Altidore, who scored in the USA's last outing, and Clint Dempsey, at the beginning of a year designed to answer many questions about America's team. U.S. national team soccer action from Carson, California. It's the United States against Panama with Casey Keller. I'm Bombley. You may have been hearing the word fitness applied a great deal with a Jurgen Klinsmann quote for the last several weeks about this team. All of this, Casey, perhaps against the shadow of the, the daylight between the national team coach and Major League Soccer. Is this team, this January camp of U.S. players fit? No, of course not. They, they, it's, not? Impo it's impossible for them to be fit. You look at the way that the MLS schedule works. So many of these players have not played matches in an, in an extended period of time. You hear players throughout all their careers, depending on whatever league it is, whatever sport it is. How do you get fit? You get fit playing matches. That's how you get match fit. In, These are in primarily MLS form. players here. But some of them have come back at, at certain stages. But the way the MLS, it's not like it's necessarily anybody's fault. It just is the way that the MLS schedule works out. So now you're playing this series of games where you have guys that haven't played in 90, 92 matches. And you're trying to say that they're fit. And I think that became evident when you saw the game against Chile and they hit the wall in the 60th minute. It's one of the issues between your and MLS, but a 4-2-3-1 alignment today. Altidore up front alone, Dempsey supporting him, and again Jermaine Jones on the back line. Yeah, Jermaine back and trying in that experiment. He got caught a little bit. You can see that little bit of inexperience there in the game against Chile. But this is a very attack-minded lineup. Breck Shea, normally an attacking midfielder, playing at left back. DeAndre Yedlin, a very attacking outside back. Zardis Ibarra, you know. Dempsey, I mean, it is a very, they're, they're trying to score some goals here, but they got to get it right defensively. And Brexley first started left back. Here comes Panama with Pinedo in goal from MLS and Perez from Dallas up front. Yeah, exactly. You know, Pinedo, who plays in L.A., this is a home field for him, won the title with the Galaxy this year, and Blas Perez has been a thorn in many an MLS defense and scored many goals for FC Dallas. Panama, of course, they were in the World Cup until those late goals in that last qualifier that didn't mean anything for the U.S. meant the world to Panama. Well, certainly, so many questions for the U.S. team with one win in their last nine outings. Adrian and Taylor, you should get set to call this match. You guys are fit for this match, I would assume. Thanks very much, Bob, and welcome to the StubHub Center in Carson, California. Sundays are made for soccer. The second game of the day for U.S. soccer after the women's game in France earlier on. The second game of the new year for the United States with the visit of Panama bringing down the curtain and what has been a January camp that has been anything but ordinary. A mixture of seasoned veterans and fresh recruits, a mixture of experience and experiment. The end product has been decidedly mixed too. Despite some bright moments, the 3-2 loss to Chile last week did little to dispel the notion that this is a team that has somehow lost its way. An assured performance and a positive result against Panama required to steady the ship and to calm the nerves as the Stars and Stripes and Los Canaleros, the canal men of Panama, make their way out into the Southern California sunshine. Fantastic scene at the Stop Up Centre as we welcome you into the booth. He's Taylor Twelman, 
I'm Adrian Healy. The glow of a World Cup summer always fades, doesn't it? But it seems to have faded particularly quickly this time around for the US. Five games without a win will do that. It turns this into almost a must-win scenario for the US against Panama. And, and Taylor, it comes at the end of a January camp that has been one with a very different dynamic to it than previous editions. But naturally, at the beginning of a new World Cup cycle, Adrian, you're going to have a transition period. I'm just not sure we've seen a transition period for the U.S. national team quite like this before. Think about it. The leaders, the figureheads, the highest paid players in the pool are all playing their trade in Major League Soccer. Michael Bradley, Jermaine Jones, Clint Dempsey, Josie Altidore now. So as much as Jurgen Klinsmann wants to talk about fitness, the biggest storyline right now over the next 18 to 24 months is that change in the dynamic in the locker room and on the field. Can Jurgen Klinsmann get the most out of those players and obviously get this team back on the winning track? Well, that 3-2 loss to Chile last week set some alarm bells ringing, didn't it? Let me ask you this, Taylor. What was your main cause for concern looking at that performance? Well, you and I were texting each other. Going into the game, it was all about the formation, 3-5-2, and quite frankly, after the game against Chile. But it's the development of Breck Shea and DeAndre Yedlin that is the subject of my continental tire analyst corner. Listen, regardless, 3-5-2, 4-4-2, 4-5-1, at the international level, you have to play both ways. While both Breck Shea and DeAndre Yellen have shown well going forward at times, there is cause for concern about the defensive side of things, spacing, awareness of the situation, the understanding of the players around them. These are all things that both Shea and Yellen must improve on. Part of their evolution as a player at the international level and ultimately at the club level is showing they can improve from past performances. Let's see today if they can take this performance against Chile and obviously improve on it today against Panama. Yeah, Coach Jurgen Clinton mentioning the lack of available fullback options. Uh, the United States back on home soil for the first time since October. Will a game against Panama provide the perfect prescription for them? The American Outlaws here in force on a perfect Southern California afternoon. USA Panama upcoming. In a pregame interview, Jurgen Klinsman, when asked what was different about this camp, Casey Keller, talked about, and these were his words, the big shots that have come back to play MLS. Now you can argue whether that's the, uh, the terminology he intended to say, how he, what he meant by that, but it also illustrates that he has in this January camp with, with players such as Dempsey back in MLS and now Josie Altidore, uh, Mix Discarude as well, coming to New York. Fewer chances to bring in younger players if he wants to see them in this camp, the, the, the established players. Well, I mean, it was always a situation. I mean, I, I never went to a January camp. I spent my whole career at that stage with the national team in Europe. So the January camp was always something that was an opportunity for guys that were maybe fringe players to make a name for themselves, to try to build themselves up. And those few players that were playing in MLS. Might have to change now, to, though, right? Yeah, well, it might have to change a little bit. Uh, the plans with more players coming back in Major League Soccer now before USA Panama. A moment of silence upcoming to remember a just now deceased member of the team from 1950. Let's go back, Adrian. Thanks very much. Welcome back uh, to the Stop Up Center. Bob and Casey in the studio. You're looking down from up on high. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. TV, the United States in bad need of a morale-boosting performance and victory. A moment of remembrance, as Bob mentioned. This week, U.S. soccer lost one of the two remaining members of the historical 1950 World Cup team, Frank Borgi, the 89-year-old goalkeeper. Let's go over to PA announcer Mike Erajo. Fans, please rise to remember and applaud former U.S. national team goalkeeper Frank Borgie, who died last week at the age of 89. A member of the National Soccer Hall of Fame, Frank Borgie made nine appearances for the USA from 1949 to 1954, including shutting out England one to nothing at the 1950 FIFA World Cup in one of the biggest upsets in World Cup history.
Frank Borgi, an absolute legend and part of a legendary team. We're looking at a team who are starting a new World Cup cycle here. And it hasn't been the smoothest of stars. I think you could uh, say that quite comfortably. Will this be the afternoon when the US get back on track? Nick Romando will be in goal today. Jaime Pinedo opposing him, a man who knows this patch oh so well. A homekeeper coming here as a foreigner today. The LA Galaxy number one. Panama, Los Canaleros, the Canal men, all in red, get us underway. Well, the US will be tapping the goal away to our left in this first half. Five games since they last recorded a victory. It's the first game after the World Cup. A 1-0 win away against the Czech Republic. Seems a long time ago now. Jermaine Jones continues as a centre-back, although it's in a, a different alignment today, Taylor. Jones will have Matt Beasler as his partner. Well, I think that's the biggest point, is not only is Jermaine Jones going to be a little bit more comfortable, but it's also going to make Matt Beasler more comfortable, especially dealing with right wide crosses, because we saw that first goal against Chile 10 days ago. Matt Beasler caught in no man's land. I'd look to see Jones and Beasler to have a good game today. First dash of intention and pace there from Miguel Ibarra. And what a big day it is for him, the number 19 on the near side. He and Giassi Zardes both getting their first start. Zardes trying to get on the ball there, the LA Galaxy striker who came off the bench against Chile for his first cap. And what a thrill to get your first start on home soil. Just few miles away well and I remember my first start for the national team you, what you want to do Adrian is your first three or four touches clean don't make a mistake and then get into it take a couple deep breaths and get into the game wonderful opportunity with Josie Altidore and Cliff Dempsey up front and Dempsey has found Ibarra here as the US start in positive fashion the little uh, flick from Bradley was well intended Battling away on the near side is Annabelle Godoy for Panama. Bradley has it back and immediately feeds Ibarra. And the end product wasn't there this time from the man who's the reigning MVP in the NASL for Minnesota United. Of course, it's the first meeting between these two nations since a fateful night, October the 15th, 2013. Now Labada, golden ball winner, as he saw. Well, the key was right before this combination play with Michael Bradley, Miguel Ibarra immediately with a good reaction on the defensive side of things that caused a turnover and got him in behind. To give away though, the cross uh, comes in and Breck Shea trying to learn that left back role. Morgan Klinsman saying yesterday that uh, he's going to have a steep learning curve. Well, Shea back on this side of the pond and looking forward to uh, rebooting his career with Orlando. No nonsense clearance from Jermaine Jones as Altador underneath it. Mentioned that night, October the 15th, 2013, Panama were 90 seconds away from beating the US, eliminating Mexico and earning a playoff with New Zealand. Quite probably their first ever World Cup berth, but then Graham Zussi changed everything for two nations and became a saint in the process, San Zussi. Panama uh, players and coaches moving yesterday to remove any sort of lingering uh, possibility that was some revenge in the air, but I do wonder. They are starting a new cycle themselves and have dreams of Russia and a first ever World Cup. Well, and also you saw their under 20s in their World Cup qualifying do extremely well, finishing second to Mexico. So, as much as everyone wants to make the, as we see it, very bad giveaway from DeAndre Yedlin, the recent history between the United States and Panama. Listen, Panama has been knocking on the door. 
since 2005. They've been there. They're an athletic team. This is a good test today for the United States. It was a sloppy back pass, wasn't it? Uh, that eluded Nick Romanda there from Yedlin and gifts Panama the first corner of the game. And they really uh, took that U20 CONCACAF competition by storm. Six of those players are with the senior team here, only one starting. As they work this corner short, back in from Davis, left footed, but it was a nice early feeler of the ball for Nick Romando. Edlin trying to feed Zardes. Sloppy touches early on from DeAndre Yedlin. And as much as everyone's talking about the fitness aspect, DeAndre Yedlin's going through a transition for himself at the club level. Now moved over to Tottenham Hotspur. He's been over there for 10 days. Now he's flying back. That's a different dynamic for Yedlin, where it was a flight from Seattle to LA. Now it's from England. Right. I think the development and evolution of DeAndre Yellen over the next two, three years, Adrian, is the most important for Jurgen Klinsmann. And it's amazing to think, Taylor, that he, he made his debut in this corresponding game a year ago, the uh, home game against South Korea. What a year it has been for Yedlin. He's involved there with a handball and sees the free kick. Right! Right! Dempsey free on the near post, right in front of Nick Romando's key here. Marcos Sanchez taking this. It's a skied header, Romando has to come and beat it. Altador though, able to uh, intervene. Zardes, we've seen him play wide. For his club team here, the Galaxy, haven't we? But it's normally on the left-hand side, playing on the right for his country. His first start, Perez trying to uh, work something through the middle. Jermaine Jones able to seal off that progress. Can Zardes keep this in? He can. Had a sophomore surge, didn't he, with the Galaxy? Went from five goals in his first year to 17. In his second season. Jürgen Klinsmann telling us yesterday he watched a lot of his games here. Difficult to get him off the field after training, was what Jürgen told us about Zardes. Shea, Ibarra, has Lionel Paris for company. Bradley surveying the scene, picking out his uh, new club teammate, Josie Altidore. Clear and Tony as far as Diskarud. Bradley looking for Dempsey this time. Dempsey uh, going airborne, but pushing off in the process on uh, Lewis Ovalle, the left back. Two good balls in from Michael Bradley. One right before this was trying to play off Josie Altidore and Clint Dempsey underneath. And then another good spot from Bradley to look for Dempsey back post. And Dempsey in his first January camp for a long, long time. Michael Bradley in his first ever January camp, but we talked about that different dynamic. It's always been traditionally one where perhaps the second stringers get a look, Taylor, and well, now it's the big name returning players coming back to MLS. That's the one end of the spectrum. And well, and coming off an offseason where Michael Bradley had surgery, I asked Jurgen Klinsmann, how was Bradley's fitness? He said, one. Number one in the group on everything. So the commitment from Michael Bradley is never a concern, no matter where he is. And I think that sends a statement to everyone else. Yes, it was an indifferent year in 2014 for Michael Bradley. He has offseason foot surgery and shows up in January this year as the number one fit guy in camp. Still seems to be a little bit of disconnect, doesn't it, as to where Michael Bradley's best position is in this country. Jürgen Klinsmann say one thing, his club coach Greg Vanny say another. It's not uh, unique to Michael Bradley, though, when it comes to US players. A little bit of a different role for country than club. There is Bradley picking off the clearance. Ibarra onto Altidore. Zardes. Yedlin into the build-up, mixed Diskarouge. 
Uh, you didn't hear the approaching footsteps there of Blas Perez. Perez, one of the two MLS players in the starting lineup for Panama. The man who's been such a big hit with Dallas, 31 goals in his three seasons in Texas. Well, when you talk about playing two ways, and Miguel Ibarra, that ball's played over the top for Michael Bradley. And Miguel Ibarra staying involved, staying into the game. That little challenge right there wins possession back for the United States in a dangerous spot. Zanibal Godoy, who's a European based player for Panama, is in Hungary with Hongveg. And without some of their big names, you think of the, who's not here for the US, but Panama have Luis Tejada and Gabriel Gomez not here. Felipe Baloy, their captain. Starting the building process towards a similar aim, the Gold Cup this summer. And very possibly the Copa America next summer. Bradley. Jermaine Jones. And then a World Cup and an MLS Cup in the same year. The year it was for JJ, 2014. Not many have done that. He's only the sixth player in a World Cup and MLS Cup in the same year. Uh, we asked Jurgen Klinsmann uh, yesterday about Jermaine Jones playing at centre back and whether it was going to be a problem if he continued to play in midfield for the New England Revolution. He said, Not at all. The only help with his fitness levels was the answer he gave us. And he's called it a golden opportunity, hasn't he, for Jermaine Jones? He said uh, it's an open invitation to embrace this role. Good test today, that chip. Over the top of Jones, but uh, beyond the reach of Orlando Blackburn. Good piece of skill from Godoy in the midfield. He's finding some spaces in between Bradley and Disgrude. That would be a nightmare if Bradley and Disgrude aren't on the same page today. There is El Bolillo, as he's known. Hernan Dario Gomez, the Colombian head coach of Panama, who just took over. He's known as what? About a year ago, El Bolillo, which... Google Translate says that's a small loaf of bread. Is that true? <laughs> well, that is one interpretation of El Bolillo, small loaf of bread. He's, there's actually another, which is a, a police baton. He has that nickname from his playing days. So you're saying Google Translate's wrong, then? <laughs> actually, a great story with him. He, he retired as a player at the age of 29, saying uh, he was only interested in parties and trained as little as possible. Uh, it's not normally what you hear from... Retiring players, there's a little bit of a flare-up here between two strikers, Altidore and Blas Perez in each other's face. And this is why you were talking about the experiment of Jermaine Jones at centre-back. I think this is a great test for Matt Beasler and Jermaine Jones. Blas Perez is a pest, he's a nightmare. He's under your skin, he's doing the little things to make your life miserable. That's a very good test today, I think, for the United States centre-back tandem. Escobar, number five, just on the ball there. He is uh, a member of that U20 squad for Panama, making his first appearance for the senior national team. Paris making his way forward, a little dink in. Oh, it's a decent one too. Romando had to come and meet it. Eric Davis was on the end of that cross from Blas Perez. Romando had to be sharp. by FIFA, number 55 in the world currently. They were as high as 29 just over or just under a year ago last March. 
after their near miss in World Cup qualification. The US currently 27, according to the world governing body. It's the first double header for US soccer since the Centennial in 2013. Remember, the US beat Germany 4 3 back on that day. That came after the women had beaten Canada. Free kick to the visitors. Just at the edge of the area, Giassi Zardes was involved. It was Davis who went down. Well, we've seen a couple combinations from Panama in the midfield, but it's all being played off of Blackburn with his back to goal. He's done a wonderful job of being strong, laying it off first time and allowing that midfield to get into the attack. So alarm bells clanging rather loudly here for Nick Rabanda, who uh, experienced something for the first time in that game against Chile, and that was a defeat. His first as US starting keeper. This is 18th appearance in goal. Davis touches it, the little back heel. Fair to say, Panama didn't quite make the most of that opportunity. A couple of scuffed shots. Beasley and Discaru going for the same ball. Altador has peeled wide right. Now Bradley trying to switch the play. Does so. Finds its sway all the way to Miguel Ibarra. Discarude. Barra and Shea with crossed wires. Grew up in California, Miguel Ibarra, Lancaster, went to UC Irvine. Was actually drafted by the Portland Timbers, said Miguel Ibarra, in 2012. They, they didn't sign him. Took a while for his career to really spark into life with Minnesota. The outer door is uh, certainly not holding off, is he? Oh, Jermaine Jones was fouled there by uh, Alfredo Stevens. Only the second time that Jones and Beaslett have played together at the back. Played together in that 1-1 draw against Honduras back in October. Steve Birnbaum uh, was given rave reviews, wasn't he, by Jürgen Klinsmann? DC United uh, defender did well against Chile, not available today. Due to injury. Well, and especially the circumstances around that game. You play three in the back. The center back next to you is Jermaine Jones. I thought Steve Birnbaum did a wonderful job, you know, with a couple nervy moments, but that's his first cap, first start. I'd expect him to see him a lot this summer. Jaime Pinedo getting his first uh, serious uh, touch of the ball. Now, MLS is back on your screens on Sunday, March the 8th. And uh, what a start we have for you. Uh, Kaká against David Villa, the league's two newest franchises, squaring off on day one. Orlando City and New York City FC will have it for you Sunday, March the 8th. Coverage starting at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Seems like we were just here for MLS Cup as well, Taylor. It's Almost exactly two months ago to the day. It's been a nervy 20 minutes for DeAndre Yedlin. Eric Davis doing a good job of pulling off the back shoulder of him, taking him on one-on-one. -on -one. Couple bad giveaways. DeAndre Yedlin has to get into this game quickly here. Marcos Sanchez. 
And their side once off DC United. Played with it briefly for them, nine appearances. A couple of seasons ago, Michael Bradley picking the pocket there of Godoy. And you sense from listening to both of the Bradley and Altador, they're relishing playing with each other week in, week out. That's what lies ahead with Toronto. First played together, incidentally, in Canada at U20 World Cup back in 2007. Away he goes Altidore. Tangling with Cummings, he's allowed to go on, and he isn't allowed to by the challenge from Ovalle. Altidore shrugged off the first challenge. Ovalle brought him down. Well, and I think Altidore may have gotten away with one here with a little clip of Cummings. But I have to see more from Josie Altidore in this aspect. Yes, it's fine to hold the ball up, be big and be strong. But when he's confident, when he's scoring goals consistently, you're seeing more of those types of runs where he's stretching the back line that he's going up against. Good ball forward from Yedlin. Better run from Josie Altidore. Now, what can Michael Bradley uh, cook up here? A really promising set piece. Well, you're going to see Josie Altidore or Zardes, one of them, make a hard run to that near post. Don't be shocked to maybe see that floating run from a Jermaine Jones. Bradley towards Zardes. Jones trying to get things rekindled. Good delivery, Zardes on the turn. Good spin. Well, from a similar sort of area, uh, Jassy Zardes scored in MLS Cup, albeit at the other end. Uh, there's a Panama player who's gone down. As if he's been Polax, we'll have a look at that as we see Zardes' his turn first. Good first touch from Zardes, and we saw that last year in his second year in MLS. His first touch has become much cleaner. Yeah, it's Ovalle, who went sprawling to the ground. Clint Dempsey was in the immediate vicinity to him. a little shove wasn't it from Dempsey I'm not sure that was a little shove I'd say that was a pretty good shove hey, the conversation continuing between the two of them this corner coming up listen Pinedo struggled in his MLS days particularly last year within swinging balls and that's the exact reason why you see Altador Zardes and Breck Shea crowd that six yard box look for a dangerous ball here from Michael Bradley and it goes to the near post Pineda was struggling to get there the clearance from Sanchez well, exactly as he drew it up Taylor Pinedo just uh, did enough. He's making his 100th appearance for his country tonight. Told me yesterday he's been in this position before, playing with his national team on a home ground. But see, look how crowded it is in that six-yard box. That's a nightmare for any goalkeeper to deal with that. Great work from Godoy to hold his runner and cover his goalkeeper, Jaime Pinedo. And he played in Guatemala with Municipal. He faced the same situation, playing on his home turf as a member of the enemy Annie Pinedo who was the Golden Glove winner best goalkeeper in the last edition of the Gold Cup in 2013 you might remember the US won that final by a goal to nil and it was Breck Shea who scored past Pinedo he had some moments last year but I thought his playoff performance against Real Salt Lake stood out immensely for Bruce Arena in the LA Galaxy. Well, that's clever work, Panama. Looked to be in position there, but Breck Shea is the man who intervened in the nick of time. We've seen this from Panama, just little combination play, and everything is off their number nine, Blackbird. 
Calm, composed, and very good at looking at it. He brings in Brexhay, brings in Matt Beasler, flying Blas Perez, good recovery from Brexhay. Shane still limping away from the uh, scene of that block. And it was uh, a vitally important one. Beasler and uh, Blackbird again in a little uh, wrestling match. He's used to having his club teammate Graham Zussi with him in uh, US camp. Zussi not available this time around. And yet sporting uh, Kansas City goalkeeper John Kempin for company. Kempin, the third goalkeeper, not dressing today. Sean Johnson, the other option for Jurgen Klinsmann. Beesler, whose brother Nick will be joining him in MLS this season. Drafted by the Portland Timbers. Here's Ibarra. A lot of talk about fitness, wasn't there? Leading into this camp by that man, Jürgen Klinsmann. He's like a president, isn't he, Taylor, at the start of his second term, struggling to establish his mandate, it appears, at the moment. whether those fitness comments were uh, just a wider term he used to talk about something a little more precise. Shea, run to Rome here. Not the cross that was needed, and he's uh, really frustrated with himself. He does enough to earn a corner, but it could have been more than that. Well, Klinsman's been off the bench begging for Ibarra to come inside so then Brexhay can find that channel. Great combination play, good look from Beasler, but that has to be better from Brexhay going forward. All the time in the world to deliver a good ball, that has to be better. Now then, so what happened with the last Michael Bradley corner, he goes far post this time and it's gone in! Michael Bradley delivers from the set piece out the door may have got a touch it matters not the US lead and Bradley is taking the congratulations and this is why you crowd a six yard box when a goalkeeper has a difficult time dealing with crosses because the reality is this after the first dangerous ball now Jaime Pinedo he's worried about the four five six guys in front of him then you get a ridiculous ball in from Michael Bradley Jaime Pinedo worried about the players that ball ends up in the back of the net and maybe Josie Altador claiming a goal is a good goal scorer always does well they can sort that out between the two of them can't they yet yeah. Altador's body language suggesting it may have taken the faintest of touches. It didn't change the trajectory of the ball, even if he did get a touch, Taylor. It was going in. Bradley's corner. They call that an Olympico, don't they? And, uh, if it is Bradley's goal, it's the 13th of his uh, US career. The first he has scored since a friendly against Mexico last April. He was on the end of a corner kick on that occasion. Well, the first corner he took was a dangerous ball in the near post. Second one just catches Jaime Pinedo in the wrong spot. Now a Southern California wave of relief breaking for the U.S. Just what the doctor ordered. Now Dempsey. Davis chiseling away on the far side for the US. And while results haven't been going their way of late, they have still been scoring goals. They've only been held scoreless once in the last 15 games now, the US, and that was the 1 0 defeat to Germany at the World Cup.
Can they get it right at the other end is the main question as Discarud sees his progress halted. for Panama. Good run off the ball from Blackburn, but offside. And you were saying, Taylor, if you're looking for the next Panamanian who may perhaps be of interest to MLS, look no further than that man, the number nine. They call him Chef in Panama because he always cooks up the goals. Rolando Blackburn, 17 goals for uh, Comunicaciones in Guatemala. Well, he scored 15 goals in Slovakia, and Adrian looking at his partner next to him in Blas Perez and the success he's had with 30-plus goals over three years. I'm surprised you, we haven't seen Rolando Blackburn in MLS yet. Yeah, he's just coming into his peak years as well, the age of 25. First game for him, incidentally, for uh, coach Hernan Dario Gomez today. Bradley. Lucky number 13 for him in his country. In his nine-year pro career. He's taken him to seven different clubs. In his first ever January camp. Jones across to Beasler. He also emerged out of a January camp two years ago. At Beasler. Omar Gonzalez uh, came out of the same camp. Ibarra. Awkward bounce of the ball. Just held up Miguel Ibarra there. Out the door. Hooking it on for Dempsey. And Dempsey in the back heel, Ibarra. Couldn't react quickly enough. Stevens took it away. Good spell this now for the US. Shea driving for the byline. Discarude. Scything challenge brings Altidore down. Lionel Paris was the culprit. And anytime you get a goal where the pressure's been on you, only one win in the last nine games, you're starting to see the U.S. push the initiative a little bit, push numbers forward, and putting pressure on the Pan Panamanian back four. Well, there's more pressure going to be applied to Pinedo here from a set piece. Bradley pulling the strings again. The key is, you see Jaime Pinedo worried. It's this spot right here, the six-yard box. Michael Bradley's got to deliver a ball in this area, crash numbers forward, because Jaime Pinedo right now is thinking about coming off his line. Michael Bradley, if he can deliver a ball with pace, it's a nightmare for Jaime Pinedo. That's a lofted effort in the, in the end, which Pinedo was able to let drift. And that is the definition of the curse of a commentator. <laughs> Exactly the opposite of what you said he should do. <laughs> uh, now, uh, ESPNFC.com is the place to go. Our uh, website, uh, a wrap of uh, the U.S. men's and women's games coming up later on. Atletico against Real. What an astonishing game that was yesterday in the Madrid derby. And uh, Jürgen Klinsmann's team camp thoughts, some of the things you can read about at ESPNFC.com. That interview with Jurgen Klinsmann is now on my uh, Twitter page. See, when you talk, I don't, I, I don't listen. I just tweet. <laughs> I've always suspected as much, Taylor. But here's Jurgen Klinsmann in your picture, uh, trying to win the hearts and minds of an entire fan base. It's always been a tough proposition for any manager to 
thoroughly convince an entire fan base, but he's heard plenty of dissenting voices in the last few months, hasn't it? Even in the stadium. Yep. There's some, a couple banners. Some signs we've seen. We've never seen that before. Home soil, I think. Suggesting that uh, perhaps his stewardship has run its course, but he has very different ideas, of course. And full of optimism yesterday when we talked to him. Full of the excitement for the road that lies ahead, and it's going to be a steep road for the U.S. this year. But, Adrian, are you surprised at all? No. That Jurgen Klinsmann's come into this job, he's gotten the technical director, now he's head, you know, he's head coach and technical director at the same time. You knew Jurgen was going to challenge the complacency of U.S. soccer and Major League Soccer at times. And you knew he was going to say stuff, whether it's promotion, relegation, fitness, his argument with Don Garber. You knew he was going to do it. It's how you react. But the only thing that matters are the players in the locker room. It doesn't matter what we're saying on Twitter, what we think on the outside. The only thing that matters are the players in Jurgen Klinsmann. Can he get them to play for him? That's ultimately what this is about. Yeah. yeah his comments sometimes remind me of uh, a dentist operating without anesthetic, Taylor. He's, he's keen to drill in, isn't he, to the root of a problem. Seems to almost relish touching some raw nerves and producing some pain in the process. And forgetting math at times, too. Yes. Saying Europe's on an 11-month season. Well, I, I had to check that. I don't know if that's true wasn't last time I looked but you understand his point yeah I thought his interview with Doug McIntyre and ESPNFC.com is a for sure read because he explains that Zardes to Dempsey is this two Dempsey yes it is swift and lethal the US counter-attack and Dempsey does it it's number 40 for him and a US national team shirt and some breathing space for the Stars and Stripes. And in front of his home crowd, a special moment from Giazzi Zardes. So much has been made from the transformation of this kid from year one to year two. Year one, he's dribbling with his head down. This ball's out of bounds. He's not playing that ball. Look at the composure from Giazzi Zardes to give Clint Dempsey an opportunity to take a touch and put the ball in the back of the net. Well done from Giazzi Zardes in its first start. And yeah. Clint Dempsey makes it look easy time and time again. 2 nothing in the United States. Decisive counter-attacking football. The lethal through ball from Giassi Zardes and a clinical piece of finishing from Clint Dempsey. And the U.S. have the insurance policy of a second goal. Badly, they needed this. Five games without a win. Remember, it was their longest winless streak since 2007 that they came into this with. A booking to go with his goal now for Michael Bradley. Won so much I'm making about Giazzi Zardes, but here's the reaction. Okay, now he wins the ball, pick up his head, take a couple touches, but give the players around you to make a play. Give Clint Dempsey an opportunity to make one touch and put the ball in the back of the net. I love this from Giazzi Zardes. He wasn't doing that in his first year in MLS. And unfortunately for everyone else, you just expect that from Clint Dempsey. Well done. A little bit of shake and bake, wasn't there, from Dempsey at the end, who uh, couldn't score against Pinedo to save Seattle's season back at the end of November when they were battling LA for a place in MLS Cup. And he's beaten him on the national team stage. Oh, it's a, a nasty slip there and a chance for Perez! Oh! Well, the less said about that, the better for Blas Perez. It was Beasler's tumble that gave him the chance. Well, it's a difficult ball from Nick Romando. And this is where, yes, when you have a goalkeeper like a Nick Romando who's very good with his feet, you want to play out of the back. But this is a tough ball, and Matt Beasler slips. 
That's a difficult ball from Nick Romano to handle. Very lucky that Blas Perez whiffs this wide. I don't know who's blushing more there. <laughs> Romano, Beasley or Perez. Extraordinary miss from the man they call Super Raton. Romano, I'm sure, breathing a huge sigh of relief. And he's come on the dribble again here. I think Romano's last appearance at this stadium, tell it was not one he'll remember with any fondness. He conceded five against the Galaxy. As Zardes continues to be a thorn in Panama's side. It's down the right-hand side this time, and he's drawn another free kick and a yellow card. And the one thing you love from Zardes, the moment we saw him in an LA Galaxy uniform, is the speed. You can't teach it. He runs like the wind, and he can cause problems whether he's out wide or up front. I think this kid's supposed to have a big year in the United States national team jersey in 2015. Yeah, Jürgen Klinsmann talked about it yesterday, didn't he? He said he's poised to deliver right now on that promise. And it comes towards Altidore! Couldn't quite get on the end of it. The man booked just to tidy that up for that challenge. Out of doors and trickery. Bradley really get the meat on the bone that he wanted with that shot. Jones with some tidying up work to do. Zardes. Go back to what Klinsman said about him. He said this is not going to be a two or three year process for Giassi Zardes. He is ready to go right now. Has all the skill set you need to be a major striker. Two footed, strong in the air, and speed. Strong in the tackle there. That's from Dempsey. And Escobar. ESPN FC, the place for comprehensive coverage on all soccer from around the globe. So much to talk about this weekend. Get the latest news, stats and info. ESPN FC tonight at 10.30, full hour-long show. Well worth your watching. ESPN 2 is the place. Final three minutes or so. First half that may not have been perfect for the US, but the scoreline certainly is. Produce goals to soothe some nerves and to uh, calm some troubled waters here. Altidore has the beating of Harold Cummings. Altidore to Zardes. Bradley! Sweeping move from the US. All that was missing was the finishing touch. But it all starts from having a center forward that's confident with his back to goal. Josie Altidore, this is big, this is key. And I hate to bring it up for the American Outlaws and the US fans at home, but this is what the United States missed when he got injured at the World Cup. A big, strong center forward that could turn the corner, pick up his head. Great layoff from Zardes, but that all comes from Josie Altidore holding the ball up and turning the corner. Tell, listening to him, that he is just so excited about being back. And also about what lies ahead for the national team, saying it's the best time ever to be a national team player with what's coming up in the next three or four summers. And he's right at the apex of his career now as well, at the age of 25. I think a lot of people forget Josie Altidore is only 25 years old. Yeah. Right. Well, Panama continuing to press. They haven't been without their opportunities in this first half. Discarude. Another 
national team player who will uh, join the movement to MLS, Discarud. Joining up with NYC FC as Zares goes down. So Zares uh, just caught by Ovalle. Ovalle has already been booked for a challenge just a few minutes ago. It's a little lucky to escape further Sensia there. But I referenced that article with Jurgen Klinsmann and Doug McIntyre at ESPN FC. I thought it was very interesting when he said, I want it to be an open conversation. I want it to be a conversation about the state of the game in this country. When you bring up a topic that simply just says fitness, if it is an open topic, then you have to bring up the fact that Matt Beasler, Fabian Johnson, and Josie Altidore all had hamstring injuries yeah. at the World Cup that was under his eye. A lot of people. So as much as it's, that's why I don't like the term fitness. Adrian, your idea of fitness, Casey Keller's idea of fitness, my idea of fitness, Jurgen, Bruce Arena, it's all different. It's a good point. And you wonder whether Jurgen Klinsmann's talking about things like intensity and that speed of thought and reaction time, rather than just an umbrella term of fitness. Bob Lee and Casey Keller will have their say at halftime. First half analysis, all the highlights uh, as well from the women's game in France a little earlier today you may have seen that with us Ian Dark and Julie Foudy final opportunity of this first half for the visitors this is Marcos Sanchez to take just their second corner of the game he is Dempsey free near post Wait. and there he is to meet it so mission accomplished so far for the US of course the problem for them has been what's happened in second halves recently but they have built the perfect platform, still much work to do for Jürgen Klinsmann and Andreas Herzog as they uh, walk in to address their players. But uh, their players have carved out a two-goal lead here thanks to Michael Bradley and Clint Dempsey. Let's send you back to the studio now with Bob and Casey. Bob. Adrian, thanks. Two guys, the goal scorers, I'll well, hear with Casey Keller, he would not normally see in a January camp. But what did Jürgen say before the match? The big shots have come back to MLS, and so they're in the January camp. And yes, it's only Panama, no disrespect intended, but they, they have worked like clockwork. Yeah, it has, definitely. I thought it was a little bit of a slow start. I would have liked to see him maybe press Panama a little bit earlier and just kind of make things difficult from the start. But it took a little while to get into the game, and then... You did what you needed to do. You got your big guys to rise to the occasion and to help you get through this sticky period where a little bit of pressure was starting to come on Jurgen Klinsmann. And flowering in front of her eyes, Giassi Zardes. He but, has really played well. It's about opportunities. I mean, we talked he's about that beginning. And, and Jesse Zardes, one of those players who gets this opportunity in a January camp, and he's taken advantage of it. What has he done? Fantastic pass to Clint Dempsey. He's holding the ball up well. He's being a, a pretty good thorn in the side of Panama, using his pace and making himself a threat. We've got the highlights co coming at halftime. Also, highlights of a tough day in France for the U.S. women, but directly off the corner kick. How often do you see that? You saw it today from Michael Bradley. We've got the highlights 